Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is uh, nine o'clock on a Sunday and it's time for a review show special. And today I'm going to be doing a review show special on Lightyear by Kyle Purnell. Now Lightyear is something that's only just recently come out by Penguin Magic. It's a Penguin Magic product and Kyle showed me this about six months ago over Zoom. Um, so I was aware of this for a very long time and I was very excited about it coming out. Uh, because when he showed it me over Zoom, I was very impressed, both in terms of the effect and in terms of the method. Uh, having now watched the full tutorial and having now watched uh, the live performances and everything else that's with the project, um, this is something really special. So this is going to be a slightly different review show special and uh, we're going to try a couple of different things. It's going to be a review show special stroke map test. Uh, because what's going to happen is I'm going to start off, as I do with a lot of review show specials, uh, by uh, interviewing Kyle and having a brief chat about him, uh, a, a chat with him about Lightyear, where it came to be, the concept behind it, what it is. We're going to break this whole thing down. Then I'm going to bring it back into the studio. We're going to give this a full review. But as part of that, I'm going to swing over to my office. I'm going to review. I'm going to perform this to Matt. Uh, and I'm going to have a brief chat with Matt as well about what he thinks about it. And then I'm going to give it my final thoughts. So this is a really in-depth look at Lightyear by Kyle Pennell. So let's get to it. So like I said, this is Lightyear by Kyle Pennell. Now, what is Lightyear? It's a very strange effect, really. What you have is you have eight pieces of black uh, acrylic, uh, sort of plastic, right? And they've randomly got holes drilled in them. And the idea is that you show these black pieces of, uh, of, of plastic and you have somebody uh, think of a two-digit number. So you say, hey, think of a two-digit number, which they do. Um, and then at that point, you show these pieces of black acrylic um, sort of plastic and you hold them up and you look through them. And with no fishing at all, you can tell them the number that they thought of, which is really strong. Then after that, you take the, uh, the, the pieces of black acrylic plastic and you put them together on a light source. And when you do, and you look through it, the only number that can possibly be made with the light shining through the, uh, through the holes in the cards is the number that they named, which is just insane. It really is. It's a very, very, very strong effect. And, and please bear in mind, it's a free choice of number. There is absolutely no force at all. Now, I'm going to talk to you all about this and what I think about it, and, uh, and we're going to break everything down. But before I do, I want to do an interview with Kyle. I'm going to, I'm going to show you an interview with Kyle. He talks about everything to do with this project, and he, uh, he talks about his inspiration, and he talks about what's coming next. So let's have a look at that interview first, and then after the interview, we'll break everything down. So I am here with the 2021 Penguin Magic Creator of the Year, the person who I think has brought out more amazing magic in 2022 than anybody, and also a very good friend. I am, of course, talking about the legend, the creative force himself, the one and only Kyle Purnell. How are you doing, Kyle? It's the best day of my life, Craig. Thanks for having me. Man, I love you to bits. I mean... <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I mean, this we're talking about. We're, talk, we're talking about your brand new Penguin release. We're talking about Lightyear, and I've I I will be honest with you. I think it's light years ahead of anything else out there. I don't know if that's why you called it Lightyear. <laughs> it is. It's incredible. And I remember you showing me this several months ago on camera. Yeah. when you were prototyping it and you were coming up with it. And at the time I was like, man, that is genius. But, that, and, you know, nothing's changed. Looking at it now and watching the tutorial and what you get and everything, this is so good, Kyle. This is just, you've brought some amazing stuff out, like big picture, I do all the time. Uh, you know, That's I've awesome. done a few specials on your stuff. I, I love everything that you do. I'm a huge fan. This is the best thing that you've ever done to this point. Like, it's just so good. That's amazing to hear. Thank you. Like, did, I mean, let's, let's talk about it for a minute. Um, I want to talk about the effect. But first of all, can we talk about sort of the inspiration behind this or something? Because I've always said one of my favorite penguin lives is your penguin life. And the wow. reason is you talk about the creative process. And very few penguin lives do that. Very few 
uh, anything on online talks about the creative process and you really break it down and i found the whole thing fascinating um Thank you. um but but so i know you know about the creative process it's inside ads and back to front so what was the inspiration behind something like this um yeah i i've been saying that i don't really remember the exact inception of it uh but the thing i do remember is knowing that I wanted this effect to happen. And the method itself was pretty quickly established. Like when, when I had to come up with a method for it, coming up with it was very easy. Um, but having it come from the brain to a physical reality, that was the nightmare part. Um, and it was one of those things that I, I just had to rely on the fact that I knew that it was possible uh, in order to keep going. Uh, with it. Um, there was points where I, I was so close to giving up on it um, because it was so miserable to do because because if you think about it, you know, like when when you're prototyping something like this, uh, the the clear way to do it would be to take, you know, some some old cards and a hole punch and just try to punch where you need to go, right? Mm -hmm. Until you realize that, oh, wait, hole punches only go about an inch into a card, right? So I couldn't punch the holes where I needed to punch them. And then hole punches are actually quite big. If you think about it, like relatively speaking, the the those holes are about bigger than the light year holes. So I either needed to get smaller holes or bigger cards. Uh, so I tried both of those. And um, and we, we, we finally got it down when I got a leather punch and a hammer and I started going around like this, uh, which was miserable, you know, especially with two young kids and trying to take naps and here I am, you know, doing this. Um, but uh, but as, as far as the actual inspiration goes, there's no necessarily direct line. Um, but if I had to think back and think, was there anything back in my earlier days in magic that kind of left an impression on me and probably guided the way I think and create. Uh, it was probably the old um, Jay Sankey trick called Pulp Fiction, the Pulp Fiction deck, uh, okay. where he'd have a bunch of um, whole, it's not really holes, but just a bunch of random shapes cut out of cards. It was a really jacked up looking deck, right? And then um, he would have a card picked uh, and then uh, he would close the deck and then the only holes that go all the way through make the shape of the card. I don't think I'm exposing much to say that that is a force. Um, and uh, and again, it wasn't that wasn't necessarily what I was consciously thinking of, but I think that probably was a, a subconscious launching point uh, over the years that kind of got me to the point where I realized that I want to make an effect like this, but I want completely free choices. And But here's the thing, like, I... I as far as I'm aware, and I'm fairly well read, I think this is a new principle in magic. Like I've seen most things that come out these days and nobody sees as much new magic as me. Most, that's, stuff, that's that comes, <laughs> yeah, most stuff that comes out these days is a variation on some existing principle sure. um, or a combination of existing principles. It's very rare to have something that's just completely new that you've never seen before at all in any way shape or form and this is just completely new like <laughs> it's just it's just and not only is it completely new you're like oh i had the method very early on if you said to me this is the effect we want you to create create it i wouldn't even have a clue if you gave me eight cards and said right punch holes out and you will be able to make this happen. I'd just be punching holes in cards until the day I died. Not <laughs> like right? how you went about this genuinely. <sighs> somebody who creates magic myself, yeah, just confuses me so much because it's so monumental. It genuinely is. You know, I I, I appreciate the kind words. Um, I. I, I've said this before, uh, but I, I truly believe that I, I don't really consider myself super creative, but what I do consider myself is super obsessive. And, and I probably obsess over things more than the average magician does. And I think that, that, uh, <laughs> that obsession might have led me to uh, tap into new ground uh, that uh, may not have been explored before. Yeah, well, you. Th this is yeah, 
just ridiculously good, ridiculously good. And also a departure from your normal style. And what I mean by that, and I've said this on camera before, one thing that for me personifies a Carl Pennell trick is something where it looks like a gimmick's being used, but it's normally quite intricate sleight of hand right. and routining and subtlety in order to create what looks like a gimmick whilst in actual right. fact it's not, right? This is a massive departure. This is slight free. I'm not going to say it's self-working because it's it it requires some practice. Sure. It's slight free. You could you could you could that you don't need to do slights or anything like that. It's it's a massive departure from the way that you normally Yeah, you you, you could probably get get your arm chopped off and still still do this thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is rare for a magic trick. Oh well, it's definitely rare, rare for me, right? Because I, I don't, you know, I, I try to come up with things that best suit what I'm trying to do. Like I don't necessarily always abide by certain rules, uh, so it happens to be that a lot of the time, that it happens to be more of a uh, impromptu uh, method. Um, but it, even though this by far is not impromptu, um, what I would say is that it is. Um, it's still along the same lines of uh it's it's not like there's flaps or you know extra panels or magnets or anything right it's still a very uh, and in terms of size little method it's, it's not a very big met so like the, the thing i think of a lot of times is um you know those i want to say that it's a it's a pro mystic thing where where you have those that uh it looks like a little root rubik's cube but it has like the you know and, and you can tell what colors on top by by the remote right to me and it's i'm, I'm not poo-pooing this at all i think it's unbelievable the technology that went into that but to me that's a big method for a little effect right now you you can use your magician prowess to make that little effect bigger of course um but just looking at the prop itself it's a lot of method for a little effect right it, it, there's a lot of technology a lot of stuff that goes into in essence one out of six right um and generally speaking just broad scope i like to flip-flop that and i like to use as little of method as possible uh, to get as much effect as possible um and even though these are precision engineered uh tiles the the real time method is very little uh you don't have to worry about palming anything in or palming anything out switching things in switching things out it is uh it's all self-contained it's all here uh there's nothing more than what meets the eye the spectators are aware of eight tiles with holes in them and that's all you have you just have eight tiles with holes in them it's still a very little method even though you know to get to this point was really difficult to be honest with you um but the real-time method is very little and i would argue that it gives a very uh big effect yeah i totally totally agree with you and the other thing about it is and you, you touched on that there it's so commercial so for anybody who doesn't know what the effect is the effect is that somebody freely thinks of a two-digit number um you have these eight tiles with various different holes in them um and you know through a various you know at the end of the effect the only way that the 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 tiles line up um shows when you put onto a light source the number they're thinking of which is an incredible moment um what i love about it is it's it ticks every box for a commercial trick it's pretty much an instant reset that you can do in front of the audience everything is completely examinable and you're going to see some footage later on people of me doing it to matt and you'll see just how examinable it is uh it's completely examinable you don't need a special surface you don't even really need a table you can do it walk around there's no angle issues to consider there's no sleight of hand it's an incredibly genuinely incredible moment that they just don't see coming a lot of magic tricks you can see the moment they will know the moment that's 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 coming up. It, it gets telegraphed ahead of time. All right, when you bring out that wallet, they know that card's going to appear in that wallet. Yeah. When when you make that sponge ball disappear, they know that they're going to have that other sponge ball. They might not know how that happens, but they right. know that it's going to happen. And this is what and it, it, one of the few tricks that I've ever seen 
where they just don't see it coming. They don't and, know. They just and, don't know. Yeah. And you know what's funny though is that that wasn't always the case. I, I went through a uh, a season of workshopping that year uh, where it was quite the opposite. Everybody knew where it was going. Every single person, with, you know, magicians. Uh, when when I was doing it like conventions and things like that, uh, and that was one of the uh, critiques that people would tell me is that you know it's really sweet but I knew where it was going to end from the minute that you brought these out and so that made me kind of go back to the drawing board and restructure the routine uh, so that way we do have those two phases uh, where these are um, more of a uh, presentational ploy uh, to first get the number so that way that you structure it so that way they think that is the effect right mm -hmm. so you, you apparently get the number by looking at their gaze and they think that's done. So then when everything comes together and you do the final re revelation, that's like a crazy cherry on top that was not expected. Uh, and I think that's why people don't see it coming now. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. And that was one of the nicest things for me, you know, performing it to, uh, to Matt and just, he just, and he's so, he's seen so much magic. And he 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 would he's seen so much he'd never seen anything like this before, and when it, when when I got to the point where I was actually even when I was getting to the point where I was putting the tiles together on the phone he still didn't know what was happening. With it. <laughs> That's awesome. And and it's like it's like he then realised and and it's just yeah it's so strong, it Thank really you. is. It's 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 so strong, so practical. Did you did you was it a conscious decision to make it as commercial as it was? um you know because it is super from a working magician's point of view it goes out and gigs a lot yeah. this is a dream this is a dream takes up very little pocket space like i say instance exam examinable instant reset no angles no table it ticks every single box thank you um i i think that's just um a result of the environments that i work in um and uh, you know i i don't I don't go, you know, out of my way to to say, okay, these are the explicit lists of boxes that it needs to tick uh, for it to be commercial. Um, but that's just where my brain kind of goes, and that that's just um, so I don't. Th there are some things I don't even uh, deal with. Like I never deal with, you know, invisible elastic thread. I never uh, deal with flaps. You know, and I, I never deal with those things. So I I kind of am working in this corner 24 seven, uh, this commercial corner. So it's never gonna be something that's gonna get, you know, millions of views on, on TikTok or anything like that, right? Uh, but in the real world, it's gonna work really well for you. Yeah, 100%. And I love that, I love that. You know, I see a lot of tricks that are just for social media and yeah, I, I, I just can't get excited about them. Now, I, I appreciate there's an audience Ryland's got like 13,000 followers on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, he does. That's awesome. Constantly looking for stuff for Instagram. He's constantly like, oh, I'll have that. I'll have that. But for me, I just can't get excited about it. Unless it, unless I do it in a gig, it's just like whatever. And this is, you know, you ain't going to do this in TikTok probably. But on uh, in the real world, oh, this kills so badly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, you know what? It was a good decision to put it out through Penguin. They've treated the whole thing with so much um, love. You know, you can just tell that they're so proud of having this as part they of it. They did so. And I love the packaging, to be I mean, like, I, I know it seems kind of trivial, but they did just a kick ass job on the packaging. Yeah, they did. They really, really did. And um, yeah, I mean, I got one more question for you because I'm gonna I'm gonna fire it back into the uh, into the studio. I'm gonna give it a full review. We're gonna see a full performance of it. But sure. before I do that, I gotta ask you a question: What's next, my friend? Because frankly, you've hit it out the park. I mean, you've brought so much amazing stuff out, but you've set yeah. an entirely new bar with this. Um, d d d is there a bit of pressure on you as to like, right, okay, yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I'm I'm uh, I'm picturing I'm picturing uh, like you're kind of being the equivalent of uh, the Avengers Endgame kind of thing where like there's this like this big this big climax and then everybody's like everything afterwards like yeah it's fine it's good it's fine um, so I'm hoping True, but that then Ryan Reynolds comes along and announces Deadpool three and everyone gets super excited again so I am very excited about that. <laughs> um, 
I don't, uh, I'm hoping that it's not necessarily a uh, framed as, uh, you know, how to top it. Because, uh, you know, it's one of those things that I don't know if necessarily there's going to be anything that tops it, but there are going to be some things out here that are reminiscent. Of, so if you like my work, uh, you'll like the stuff that's going to come out soon. <laughs> oh, well, I'm the biggest Carl Pernell fan on the planet, and and I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say, I gotta say, you, congratulations! You're uh, you're one of the lecturers on Magic Fest in January. Yeah, right? that, that's awesome. Wow, what an, <laughs> and I saw the lineup, and I'm like, wow, what a lineup! Like, what yeah, a, the talk talk about your imposter syndrome. You know, being up there beside you know Paul Gertner, you know. That's incredible. I mean, the, the the I'm actually considering going over there to to just 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 to go to the convention because that's. I would love to have you there. Mm, I'm I'm seriously uh, thinking of going because I I really, the lineup is great and it's, it's great. It's an amazing convention. What are you planning? Uh, is that have you got? Uh, can you give us yeah. a speak? I know that you're going to be putting something special together for this. I am. Uh, it is kind of. Talking about what I just uh, said, I have, uh, I'm kind of calling this lecture um, Little Method, Big Effect. And so everything we're talking about uh, throughout the course has to fit those parameters uh, where there is uh, very little method going on real time, but it has a disproportionately strong effect on the audience. And so a lot of what uh, we're going to talk about is going to be impromptu or gimmick lists so that because I think it's important that when you're at a convention like like if I go to a lecture at a convention I want to be able to learn something and do something like that day like as soon as I just learn it right um, so even if it's not like they're pitching something to me like if they say okay this is how you do it but you have to you know get your scissors out your double stick tape I'm like I don't bring that to a convention Right. Uh, so it's really nice when I can learn something right away from uh, from people that I can practice even in real time as they're you know teaching it to the uh, convention hall. Um, so because that's something I value, uh, I'm sure that some other people value that, too. So there's going to be quite a bit of that. Oh, amazing. Well, you know what? You're setting the magic world on fire. You have been hitting out of the park for two years, like just really at the top. And I, I'm so excited for what's coming next. I really am. Congratulations on all, all of your success, my friend. It's so well deserved. Thank it you really so much. Fun. I'm going to take this back to the studio and we're going to give it a full review. And uh, spoiler, it's going to get a great review. Uh, <laughs> I love this. Uh, but Kyle, thank you so much for joining me on the channel. And hopefully you'll be back on Magic TV again soon. Can't wait. Have a great day, my friend. Thanks, you too, man. Okay, so thanks to Kyle Purnell for coming on the channel and letting me interview him. Uh, I will say I consider Kyle a very good friend, but this review is completely unbiased. I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. I'm going to uh, I'm going to be honest, just like I am with every single product, whether it's Kyle's or somebody else's. Now, uh, spoiler, I got to be honest, I really like this. I've been wanting to do this routine since Kyle first showed it me a few months ago. Uh, like I said at the beginning of this uh, video, Kyle showed me this about six months ago on, uh, on uh, over Zoom, and he then explained how it worked. And at the time, he was trying to actually do it a different way. He was actually trying to do it with, uh, uh, with a different type of substance, not black plastic. And uh, fast forward about six months, this comes out, and I'm like, oh yes, this is what I've been waiting for. Now... I'm going to show you a live performance before we get any further into it, because you've seen Kyle talk about it. You've heard me talk about what the effect is, but I want you guys to actually see a performance. So this is a performance of me doing it to Matt. And it's kind of like a mini Matt test as well, because I then ask Matt his opinion on what he thinks of this trick. And I ask him to break down his thoughts on it as well. And what Matt says is very fascinating. So let's have a look at a performance first of all and uh, chat to Matt about what he thinks about uh, Lightyear and then we'll bring it back into the studio. Cool. I'm going to show you something crazy. Okay. Um, oh, I, crazy. You know, I've always, you've seen me doing mind reading in the past, right? But I can't really oh, read no. minds. I'm cheating, right? When I'm doing it, right? <laughs> At least but you're honest about it. I'm cheating. I'm making it look like I'm reading minds, but not really. Okay. But I've, I've got this 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 invention that my friend has sent me and it allows me to do simple mind reading for real 
Like this is crazy stuff. So let me right. show you how it works. So I've got my wallet here. Yeah. Yeah. Magic Circle so member. Yeah. So it gets kicked out. Associated the inner magic so circle. They send somebody over here to burn it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but I want you to think of a two-digit number. But make it really random. Don't just do like 30 or 40. Make it a really random two-digit number. Can you do that for me? Uh, yeah. Yeah, make it eclectic. I'm going to look away, write it in big, massive letters on here. And there's two reasons to write it down. The first reason is it helps you memorise it. Second of all, it commits you to that let number. I know you might change your mind halfway Do Don't do this. This is real mind reading. Whatever you write down on here, this is actually what we're going to use. And thirdly, you can show the camera without saying it out loud. So everyone knows the number you're thinking okay. of. I will look away. When you have shown everyone the number, please let me know. Okay? Got it? Yeah. Yeah? Cool. Now, if I told you I could tell you that number, that'd be good, right? Yeah. Magic Circle member. Remember. Please remember that. Magic Circle <laughs> member. <laughs> I'm going to pop it away in the outside part of my wallet so I can't cheat. But you can keep an eye on it the whole time. Okay, but do you know how I'm going to do this? Hey. Magic Circle member. Every time, Magic Circle member. But here's what we're going to do. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to read your mind, right? I'm going to read your mind using this device that my friend sent me. Now, this is incredible. Like these, the, it just looks like pieces of acrylic with holes in them, right? But this is next level. So it looks, because what, you know, they say that the eyes are the windows to someone's soul don't they? Yeah. So we're going to try and do something with your eyes. I'm going to stare into your soul, Matt. This is going to be amazing. This is deep. This is, this is deep stuff. I'm going, to, I'm going to stare into your soul and hopefully what will happen if I manage this is I'll be able to get what your card is just by you looking through. So can you do me a favor? Can you just look at those cards? Look at me. Just random holes punched in pieces of acrylic. That's all it is. Why just that? Random holes. Because it allows me to do something. See, if you look through, look through. Yeah. Look at me. Look there. Yeah. Look at me. Look there. Yeah. Okay, interesting. This is weird. It is weird, it, isn't it? Okay, the number you got, it's either like in the teens or in the 40s. Somewhere. Look at me. Yeah, it's in the 40s. What the hell are you talking about? You with it? Look at me. 47. Fuck up! No way! <laughs> but, 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 but hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, because it gets weirder. You asked what these were, right? I got a photo here. It's just of a blank screen. And there's a reason why I have a photo of a blank screen. What? Let me just show you something here. Really weird. Did I influence you? Did I tell you to think of 47 or anything? No. No, I didn't, did I? This is... Uh, <clears throat> the holes only line up in one way. Let me take the... Uh, let me take the thing off so that it doesn't... Uh, there you go. Boom. I don't want it going off. They only line up in one way. If I put that there, can you see what the holes line up for there? Oh, no, dude, seriously. That oh, my like, God. That looks like 47 to it me. It does right? look like 47. Do you know why it looks like 47? Because the only way you can actually light these up, the only way those holes align is using the number 47, which is the number you've really thought of. No way. You can have a look at those. You can check it out. You can examine it. You can check everything. Out of curiosity, Matt, what made you pick 47? Nothing made me pick 47. Nothing. It was just randomly selected. There was no reason for it. I just picked 47. I wasn't sure if he was referencing Agent 47. Who's Agent 47? You don't know Matt very well, do you? It's a geeky thing. Geeky reference. I cosplayed as him when I went to Comic Con. Huh? It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. <laughs> um, that's weird, though. That's bizarre, isn't it? It's not Braille. No. Yeah, that's like nothing. <laughs> yeah, genuinely. Nothing. The only way you're going to get a number out of these 
is 47. That's... Yeah, there's the four. You can mix these up in any way. Yeah. And the only way you're gonna get a number. Yeah, that's nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell is that thing? I have no idea. These are bizarre. <clears throat> do you think of it? The trick. Oh, well, I don't know. How you and this isn't it. a map test. This is a review show special, not a map test. But that's not. I think number. this is. I think this is one of the cleverest tricks I've seen in a long time. That's just a dot. But I don't understand it. It just like the whole thing makes no sense at all. Yeah. <laughs> that hey, whole Matt. thing just makes no sense. Magic circle member. I know, I'm aware. This isn't your trick though, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, who That's you remember of again? Number. Magic circle, boom. <laughs> Definitely not. Oh, I thought I got one then. That's not a number. Nope. I can't make another sing. I can't make a single number out of any of them. <laughs> Other than forty-seven. <laughs> That's not a number. Nope. Nope. It doesn't matter which way you put them round. You can't make a number out of them. It's very bizarre. So how did he make? You can't just guess forty-seven. Because I plucked it out of my head, didn't I? It was a one of. I plucked the number out of my head, cards. wrote it down on a card. It's one of his normal business cards. We've seen hundreds and thousands of these things lying around. There's nothing weird about it. You can't see through it from the other side. It's just a business card. So I wrote it on the business card, stuck it in the wallet, which was then there. I was looking to see if you were going to be like, oh, I got your business card. I'm just gonna... There was none of that. And then it just went into the into the, the his wallet, which is your normal wallet, isn't it? It's got your yeah. bank card and stuff in it. So yeah. that is your normal wallet, which I've seen hundreds of times when we've been out and you can't be asked to go to the bar. <laughs> and then... It's not joking, people. And then... That's insane. And then you just pick two packs of piles of these things up. <coughs> And they make for, and I can't even make 47 now. It's like there's nothing. <laughs> I can't make anything out of them. It doesn't matter which way you put however many of them around, it doesn't do anything. You just pick four and four, and then they just made 47. And like, I've literally been trying this for how long now? I'm oh, sorry, about everyone. Six or seven minutes. I'm trying to make a fucking number, and I can't. <laughs> Can you keep going for another minute? I can't can't them. make a single number out of them. There's nothing. So what do you think of it? This is going to be the world's first review show special stroke map test. <laughs> um, I'll tell you right now, I'm giving this 100%. I, Kyle, uh, who created this, who was the Penguin Magic Creator of the Year in 2021 and well-deserved. Well, I mean, if he's doing stuff like he's that. Also, he's also on the net tricks. He's one of the instructors on the net tricks. Oh, so is he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's one of my uh, favourite magicians. And he's come up with some very clever stuff, but this is next level. And I remember him showing me this a while ago over Zoom. And when he showed it me, I was like, man, that's genius. Because it's, I've never seen anything like this before. This is a new principle as far as I'm concerned in magic. Like this is brand new. And for me, it ticks all the boxes. It takes up very little pocket space. You just throw these into your pocket. It's a pretty much an instant reset, which means you can do it again and again and again and immediately. It's very easy to do. There's no moves or anything in it. It's incredibly easy to do. Um, and it's such a unique thing. They think of a number. It's not a card trick. It's not a coin trick. They think of a number, and that number just appears here. And it can be a different number. If I did this to you again, it'd be a completely different outcome. But it's got to be a different number, because you didn't force a number on me. I picked a number off the top of my head. I just plucked one out of thin air. Yeah. Apparently, it's something to do with Jack and his geeky stuff. Yeah, yeah, man. But I just picked a number at the top of my head. Mm -hmm. So you, I mean, they just, even if you're just doing one at a time, they're just a mess, aren't they? Yeah. But there's nothing. I 
I got nothing, dude. What do you think? You think it's a good trick? I know you've got nothing. I know it's completely flawed, you. You think but it's a good you, trick? In oh. order for you to be able to manipulate those in a way to make a number, which I don't... I mean, I've... How you could just randomly know how to manipulate those to make a 47 when I've just sat here for five minutes and I can't make a single number regardless of what it is, is beyond me. And you're saying that it's a really simple trick, but it can't be because I've just sat there for five minutes and I can't make any number, never mind one that someone's just randomly picked off the top of their head. So mine and your opinion of what easy is, is obviously clearly very far apart. <laughs> But to be able to, like, I don't know how you know. You've got to know the number. There's got to be a way of you knowing the number, but it's in my head. So how? It's in my head. I'll put it on the card. So writing it down has got to... Well, there's two aspects of this, isn't there? The first aspect is how I got the number. And then the second aspect is how the number appeared on the cards. Yeah, I don't know either. I know. <laughs> I have no you. idea. To either of those things, not a clue. <laughs> but it's cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Do they help you know what my number is? No. Do they actually know what my number is? I don't know. It just came to me. It just appeared in my head like a bolt of lightning. You wrote, it looked deep into your soul, Matt. Yeah, I looked into your soul, remember? I didn't look at him. <laughs> <laughs> um, not a clue. That's going to blow people away. Is it that is, brand new? Brand new. Brand yeah. new. Only just come out. You haven't performed that out anywhere yet? Not yet, no. The first performance I've given it is you. I uh, I, I, literally spent the last day or two practising it, just making sure I knew what I was doing with it. And uh, I've, got a, I've got a couple of gigs. The next couple of days I'm going to be doing it at gigs. But this is the first. Your, that performance was the very first time I've ever done it. It's cool. I like it. Yeah? I like it. Yeah, it's cool. And it, there's something different. Like, I don't. I don't even know what they're supposed to be. Do you think it matters that it's like nothing on God's green earth? It look like, like you said, what the hell are they? Yeah, no, they just... I don't think that matters. We've had this conversation before, you know. I think as magicians, it's, I don't think there's a problem bringing out really cool no. stuff to show people. Of course not. It's something to remember. Like, if you... Like, I already can't remember the guy's name that made these. Sorry, mate. Carl but I already Carl can't. Now. Carl, yeah, him. I can't remember <laughs> it already, right? But I ain't going to forget these things in a hurry. Because these things are brilliant. They just look great. They look like if you pull these out, you, if you went into your pocket as a gigging magician and you went, do you want to see a trick? And the person goes, yeah. And then you put your hand inside your pocket, they're going to go, he's come out with a deck of cards. And you go, they're going to go, what the fucking hell is that? And you've got their attention straight away. Yeah. If you pull out a pack of cards, they're going to be like, oh, this is going to have to be a really good bloody card trick because I've been to three weddings this month, so I've seen 750 million card tricks. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you pull that out of your pocket, yeah. everybody just goes, ooh, I've not seen those before. Because mm -hmm. I haven't seen those before. And when you pulled them out, I went, ooh, mm -hmm. what are they? Yeah. And I've seen 750 million card tricks today. <laughs> so like... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's funny because it's true. So, and then if you pull, if you get something out and it sparks my attention, I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to be good because I haven't seen it before. And mm. then I've no idea how that works in any way, shape, or form. There's, there's no holes in it there. No, no, two. No. No idea how it works at all, but they look really cool. And they don't look really flimsy either. They look quite well. Made. I think they'll last a long time. Yeah, there's nothing that can really go wrong with them. I'm sure, sitting yeah. on them. But like, yeah, I think that's great. I've no idea how it's done. I've no idea how you did it. I don't know. I can't make a single number out of them. That's completely thrown me. I haven't got a clue. It's so it passes the yeah. first ever review show mat test special. Whatever this is, then yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's going to go down really. And it's like quick as well. So you could do that when you're out and about gigging at weddings and you've got 200 Oh, yeah. And, and I, I put it on a phone screen, but imagine you were doing this in a nightclub. Or you just you hold know. it up to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or outside at a festival and it's in the middle of the day and you just hold it up to the sun or something. Or... Yeah. You could, so you could literally do that anywhere because the yeah. two things you've just mentioned are either really dark or really light. So yeah, you exactly. can do it anywhere. Yeah, exactly. And it's quick and it's easy to carry around. Is it expensive? No, not that expensive. It's like $50. Yeah. 
Okay, he's living yeah. in America. Yes. Um. Yeah, it's brilliant. I like yeah. it. I like it a lot. I really do. I think it's a great trick. There you go. Passes the mat test. Let's take it back to the studio and do a full <laughs> review show on it. Because Matt's opinion isn't important. He's a mother. <laughs> Most important if opinion. My opinion isn't important. Why do you keep asking me? Will you shut up? <laughs> You're making me look bad now. It's not about me, it's about you. It's not the Matt show. Shut up and go sell some shit. <laughs> So there you go. I mean, that's a full performance and a reaction from Matt. Now, I'm going to talk about Matt's uh, reaction in a minute. But before I do, let me tell you exactly why I love this. For me, this is one of the most commercial tricks I've ever seen. This literally ticks every box. So first of all, all you need are these black pieces of uh, acrylic, right? That's it. So I plan on wrapping an elastic band around them and just throwing them into my pocket and I'm good to go. I know Kyle keeps them in a little uh, sort of velvet bag, whatever you want to do. The point is, this is all you need. That's a, that's a massive tick, right? Also, it's not an instant reset, but you can reset it in front of the audience in a matter of seconds, and they won't even know that you're resetting. It just looks like you're looking at, uh, you're looking and dealing these black pieces of acrylic down onto the table. So as you walk away to the table, as you walk away from the table, you've reset. Thirdly, it's um, uh, it's completely examinable. You saw uh, Matt desperately trying to figure out exactly how this trick works, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. But it is 100% examinable. Fourthly, it's a different outcome every single time, uh, which for me is killer. It means that uh, I'm not going to have to worry about only doing a certain amount of times at a gig because it is a different outcome every single time. Massive tick. Um, also, another big advantage is that uh, there's no angles in any way, shape or form. You can look at it from every single angle. It's also you don't need a table. You can actually do this into a spectator's hand. Also a massive tick. The effect is really, really strong. Uh, like, really strong. Um, uh, it's a very unique revelation. Another plus point is it's easy to do. There's no sleight of hand involved at all. You're going to have to remember a little bit of stuff that took me about half an hour to remember. And once you from, but nothing difficult. It's not like a mem deck or something. It's relatively easy to remember. When you've got that down, it becomes, it's very intuitive. Uh, and what I mean is the system that Kyle's put together to be able to do this is intuitive. It makes sense. It's logical. It's not like there's no logical sense and you have to brute force uh, memorize something. That's not the case. It's, it's a very logical way to, um, to follow the procedure you need to do in order to get to where you need to be. And talking about procedure, it doesn't look like there's any procedure. There is procedure. From the magician's point of view, it looks like uh, you are doing something in order to want of a better word, program these cards. But from the layman's point of view, from the audience's point of view, there's no procedure at all. You just show the cards, you deal them down onto the table, and you're done. It doesn't look like you do anything. So there's a lot of massive positives. Now, some of the chatter that I've read on the internet, some people say, oh, it's not examinable. I, I, I refer to you to Matt. Matt was desperately trying to figure this trick out. Like, he was desperately trying to figure this trick out. And you saw him holding it up to a light source right there, because what you don't see is when we're filming these, there's a massive light shining down at us. So you can just hold them up and, and he can just very, very easily hold it up to the light, right? And um, you saw, you saw right there that there's no absolute, that, that he, he was desperately trying to make other numbers. And it's pretty much, impo no, it is, it's impossible to make any other numbers other than the numbers that you want them to make. Um, it's just impossible. And for me, the method to this is as exciting as the trick itself. The trick is amazing. Don't get me wrong. I love the trick. I cannot wait to start performing it. But take away the trick, right? Take away the trick. The method is great. And I mentioned this when I interviewed Kyle earlier on. There's very little that's new in magic. Most tricks, variations on... Um, principles that have come out before, right? That, that, that's just a, a case, or the, someone's combined three or four principles or whatever it is. Um, this is this is a brand new thing as far as I'm aware. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, it's, it's unique. 
as far as I'm concerned. So the actual method is incredible. And it's very, very fun to perform because it's completely slight free. It allows you to focus on presentation. Um, and well, I remember looking at the tutorial and what Kyle says in there is true. He just says, all you have to do is just practice it over and over again, get it into your head, and then you'll be able to do it anytime, anywhere. Very, very true. Now, the only negative that people might have about it is that um, they look like nothing on God's green earth when you bring them out. But again, I don't have an issue with that. Yeah, in the right time, right place, it's nice to have organic magic. I 100% agree with that. I've got tricks that are designed to be organic. However, I have no problem pulling out a very weird and wonderful special looking prop. I'm a magician, right? It's my job to present magic to uh, an audience. When I'm paid to go to a gig or when people know I'm a magician and I'm doing magic, I don't mind bringing out a set of cups and balls or something weird like these pieces of black plastic. If anything, it creates intrigue and interest in what I'm doing, right? Um, I can't like justify producing a silver dollar and then say that these, these black pieces of acrylic aren't very, you know, organic. Well, they might not be organic, but I don't care. That's that's not an issue for me. Um, but it's it's worth it's worth bringing up. Outside of that, the only other thing that I've seen, as I say, is the examinability thing, which is totally not an issue as far as I'm concerned. Having watched Matt desperately try to dissect how the trick works, <coughs> I'm failing miserably with that over and over again. Um, yeah, I mean, you just saw, you've just seen a performance of this. You can see exactly how it plays. One thing that I'll point out is that uh, uh, obviously you guys are all magicians. You note that when I was doing this, I used uh, an Orphic Wallach as a peak. I don't think I've ever shown Matt a peak before. Um, I didn't want to do the method that was on the actual instructions, even though it would work. Um, it would look a little bit weird on camera, I thought, and it's also uh, a method that I don't really tend to use in the real world. So instead of using that, I, I actually used an Orphic wallet to get the peak. Um, but, but go back and look at Matt's reaction. Um, even before I do the revelation with the, with the pieces of plastic and I just tell him his number, he freaks out like absolutely freaks out. And that kind of sh showed me something that kind of told me just how powerful it is uh, doing a simple revelation of something. You know, sometimes we overlook uh, the simple things because we're looking for the next wonderful thing that's going to set our career on fire, right? That's, that's something that we all do. I, everyone, everyone in magic does that. You know, there's something, and sometimes that's, you know, it's as simple as just doing a peak of a two digit number. I mean, that's really strong. Um, so that's, that's something. And I love the fact it's a two phase routine. And the first phase is the revelation of the number. And then the second phase is the added kicker. Um, love that. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to not like about this, in my opinion. I think it's a contender for trick of the year. For me, and I've been very open about this when I've said that for me, the trick of the year is Lux. And I know some people disagree with me, and that's fine. All I can say is I've been doing Lux every single gig, every single gig. And Ryland's got a, an opportunity to do something coming up at some point soon. Um, uh, which, that's got quite a big high profile and um, we've chosen to do it for him to do Lux. That's how strong I think the effect is. Um, having said that, I think that Lightyear is one of the products, one of the only products this year that has come close to touching Lux, in my opinion. And um, I think it's going to, I don't know, I'm going to have to sit down and have a serious think about it. I'm going to have to go uh, do this in the real world a few times first to see uh, if I'm right, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's something very special with this. And I think there's also potential to take Lightyear and, and plug it into a longer series of routines. Um, I don't know how, and I haven't actually thought it through yet, but the bottom line is it's a revelation of a freely chosen number. There's gotta be a way to build that into a longer routine. I think there will be a way to bring to build this into a longer routine. I just need to think through how that would work. Uh, but that's something I'm gonna be putting a lot of thought into. And I think a lot of people that have got uh, any creative bone in their body, they'll be doing exactly the same thing and seeing this as a tool uh, that you can plug into other routines as well. But yeah, I'm going to give this 150%. I love this. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Kyle has hit it out the park. As far as I'm concerned, 
Uh, I, I, for anybody else, I would say that this is Kyle's magnus opus and this is probably the best thing he'll ever do. But knowing Kyle, he'll just come up with another amazing thing at some point in the next few months because that's what this man does. He just takes uh, tricks and turns them into miracles and he takes miracles uh, and creates them in a way that nobody else does. So I'm sure that there's going to be something even bigger coming from Kyle in the not too distant future. But as it stands right now, even though Kyle's body of work is fantastic, and even though I love everything Kyle Pernell has brought out, this is the best thing that I've seen him bring out. So yeah, 150%, highly recommended. Pass the mini mat test as well. This is an incredible product and you can get it directly from Penguin Magic. Stay go guys, that's another review show special stroke map test in the bag. Do me a favor, let me know what you think in the comments down below. You want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again tomorrow at 6 o'clock with another Magic Live and at 9 o'clock with another video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, go to www.thenetrix.com and go check out the Netrix. We have just put up uh, the VMCs that are taking place this month. We're doing a Chop Cup Masterclass, a Cups and Balls Masterclass. We've got a whole bunch of stuff lined up, so it's going to be super exciting. I hope to see you all there. Uh, if you are a member of the Netflix, please uh, come and join me. But uh, I'll see you again soon. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm.